Hello everyone and welcome to the Anatomy of Knitting episode 77. My name is Erin and I'm going to be your host. I am coming to you from Cork, Ireland. It is currently the 13th of August 2015 and uh, it's supposed to be a beautiful day. <laughs> it isn't quite beautiful yet. We have a very uh, overcast day here. Um, it's supposed to end up getting up to 72, which I think is 21 degrees uh, Celsius. So it's going to be warm up uh, significantly. Uh, so I figured I'd get this done before it got too warm. So let's see, uh, I've got Week in Review, I've got a finished object, I've got works in progress, and some spinning. So let's get started. <laughs> this week uh, in review, there's Ari. Hello, Ari. How are you, sir? We um, haven't really gone out and about with the boys to go like um, like on a nature walk or a hike or anything like that. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello. Um, we ended up on Saturday taking the boys uh, up to get their haircuts um, and we live within walking distance of the village that we live in, so we decided that the boys would just would just walk. Sweetie, I'm trying to podcast, okay? I can't give you loves, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, we ended up walking uh, up the hill right in front of us and then um, onto the main drag of the main street and uh, ended up getting the boys uh, there. I think this is their fourth haircut that they've ever had. And... There's a place in Vancouver that we like to take them that is uh, very child, like it's it's a child focused haircutting place. Um, there's one here that's like that, but I just um, I took them there before we left for one of our trips. I don't remember which one, um, but I didn't think that they did a, a fantastic job. So, and it's it's not out of the way, but it's a little out of the way to go to. So I decided that we um, would just go to the, the haircutting place that's that's on the main drag here. It's um, a barber shop uh, slash little boys haircutting place um, all in one. So they have the they have the car that you can sit in, and they have uh, shows playing on the TV and that kind of thing. Sweetie pie, please don't please don't lay on my knitting stuff. I need to get to that. Thank you. <clears throat> so. We ended up walking there, and um, so my husband and the boys were going to get their haircuts. And so we decided that Malcolm would go first, because he seems to be the more brave boy. Um, and he had a fantastic cutter. He just was like, and was done in like three seconds. It was it was fantastic. Um, and then Nathaniel went, and he did not want any part of uh, getting his haircut done. Um, and to get around his ears complete, um, his dad had to hold his body, and then I had to hold his head. So you can imagine that that didn't go very well. <laughs> At least he didn't he didn't like it very much. So we got that over and done with, and then um, and then Daddy got his haircut. And the original plan was that we were going to go to the library because the um, company that that uh, is their is their crash the the daycare that they go to on Thursdays uh, was having a, a a story time with um, Irish um, they were reading Irish you know the the language <laughs> I'm having a hard time articulating that um, Irish is taught in schools here. Uh, and, and it's part of the, what they call the leaving cert certificate, uh, which is kind of the similar thing to a high school diploma. Um, so they get, they get educated on, on Irish throughout the, throughout their schooling career. And, and if our boys, if we end up staying here 18 years or, you know, however long it takes us to get through, um, schooling here, uh, the boys will learn Irish as well. Uh, so they had a story time in, in, in Irish, and so I thought that it would kind of be an interesting experience to go to, and we'd be supporting um, the, the child care. Um, you know, we'd be part of the group that shows up. So um, we went, and um, they were so keyed up from their haircutting experience that they didn't 
they weren't behaving very well. Um, they were running and they were yelling, and so we had to we had to extract them from the library. And um, Malcolm got really upset because he he wanted to he wanted to be in the library. He wanted to be with the books. Um, and so I I got down to his level and I explained to him, you know, these are the rules of the library. If you do not follow them again, we are we're not going to stay. We're going to go home. Um, and then Nathaniel just didn't want any part of staying at the library, so. We um, decided to split up, and uh, his daddy and him came back home, and Malcolm and I stayed at the library, and we enjoyed some of the stories. And the way that they did it is that they read the Irish, uh, they read a sentence in Irish, and then they re uh, recited the sentence in English. So um, that was really helpful. I was, I was, because because I have no idea of any Irish words, and I doubt the boys have any um, knowledge of Irish yet. Uh, we were all able to enjoy the stories. So <clears throat> that was an excellent experience. Um, Malcolm ended up getting a balloon and he was just, he was just happy. Um, we ended up reading a couple of books before the story time started. And uh, yeah, so that was really, that was just a nice experience. We haven't really spent that much time um, in the library here. So it, there's a story time on, on Fridays that I'd like to start taking them to, but because this is Ireland, everything shuts down for the summer. So it's not running during the summer. A time when you think a story time should, right? Anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, let's see. Today's my husband's birthday, and he wants an apple pie instead of a cake. I'm not really a big fan of pie. Um, and so... I was going to buy him one, but um, I remember that I had bought this. Um, around the 4th of July, They some of the um, German grocery stores, the Aldi and the Littles uh, here, sell kind of American-themed foods to celebrate the 4th of July. So um, I got this, and I got a bunch of other um, cupcake mixes. Um, and so this is how I'm going, this is what I'm going to make for him for his birthday. I have no idea how it's going to turn out because I've never, I've never actually made a pie. So, and a lot of mail mine is coming, so I'm going to just, all right, sorry about that. I, um, uh, got a letter finally about this thing that gets to be removed. Um, the thing that I really don't like about Ireland here is the weight that you have to <laughs> deal with. Um, I went to the doctor for this little basal cell carcinoma a couple of weeks ago, and um, I've been waiting for this appointment time, which will be at the end of September. So, and it's at it's at five ten p.m., which is really odd. Um, I wouldn't think that that they would do anything about this at five p.m. Uh, on a Monday. So, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how much longer I get to live with it. Um, okay. Where was I? So I was talking about the library. Um, Malcolm ended up being, once we kind of calmed him down and, and told him the rules, he, he decided, okay, I think I'll follow the rules. So, uh, that went well. And then we did some crafting yesterday for, um, their father today for his birthday. Um, I got a couple of canvases for, um, for them to paint and I, I put masking tape on with their initials um, so one has an M and one has an N and, and they painted them and uh, I think they turned out pretty good for kids <laughs> it looks it looks more like mud instead of the colors that I actually gave them but it is what it is um I think that's about it of the week in review um, we did to end up taking um, so the last time I spoke to you, uh, Malcolm had uh, been bitten by that tick, and um, I did get a message from one of you viewers uh, asking me to take him to the doctor, and um, thank you for sending me that. Um, I decided to wait until I thought that there was something going on, um, because, you know, again, most tick bites end up being nothing. So... Um, he ended up complaining, uh, he was really irritable on Tuesday, and, um, 
was complaining of some sound sensitivity. So like normal sound or sounds that we've normally made, like the blender mixing up our, our smoothies, um, he would say, he said would hurt his ears and that we needed to turn it off or to stop or, um, you know, his brother would be, would be screaming like he usually does. And, um, you know, Malcolm would say, oh, it hurts my ears. It hurts my ears. So, um, I decided to call and get an appointment and we took, uh, we took the boys in yesterday and, uh, Malcolm got checked out and, and she doesn't think that the, the doctor doesn't think that anything is, is going on. So, um, We'll just keep watching and, and making sure that everything's okay. Um, she did a thorough exam, and I feel I feel comfortable and confident that that nothing's nothing's gonna happen. So, um, we'll move on. <laughs> I do have a finished object for you today. I finished my Felicia Cakes colorway of knitted wit socks. One, there's like this ribbon holding these together that I've never actually cut because I think I'd just rather leave them together because I know that they would get separated if I ever, if I ever cut the ribbon. Eek. Urgh. Should have done this first. Here are my Felicia Cakes socks. So much fun. I am call, I'm also kind of calling these my, um, my movie socks, um, because with the first sock, I um, I had knit the cuff, uh, done the heel, and turned the or done the gusset, um, and I ended up knitting knitting most of the foot while we were watching Inside Out, um, because Inside Out didn't didn't open here until about two weeks ago, or no, I guess three weeks ago now. And then um, the other sock, well, I don't you know I don't know which one I actually knit which movie but um, the other sock uh, I knit while we were watching the the newest Mission Impossible movie um, so two completed socks and I'm really happy to put them on I, I haven't worn them yet because I wanted them to look lovely for you I love that highlighter yellow um, it's just it's just so fun and I do have a little bit of sock yarn left that's all that I have left which will be enough to do at least a couple of squares to go in the sock yarn blanket that I haven't touched <laughs> in a bit. So, yay, socks. I like socks. Of course, I'm not wearing hand-knit socks today because it's going to be so warm. Um, let's see. Works in progress. Um, I still have the Life on Sunday shawl. I have not worked on it um, since I last spoke to you. I think the thing that's holding me back from working on it is is doing these cable stitches. So you just still have that one row of, of um, the blue. Um, plus, I've also um, spent most of my time working on those, those uh, Felicia Cake socks. Um, and the next project I'm going to show you. Um, back in March, I went to... Uh, I went, sorry about that, I thought I heard Lola meow outside. Um, I went to London as uh, to go to the knitting and stitching show that is there. Um, and there I bought this kit. It's a Knit Next knitting kit, the knitnext.co.uk. And I got the kit to make that tea cozy. And um, I am currently making that tea cozy. <laughs> the instructions are not really all that clear. Um, you know, it, it, it calls, it calls yarn A the, the white yarn and yarn B the black yarn. And it tells me that there's two balls of the white yarn and one ball of the black yarn, when in reality, I got two ball, two small balls of the black yarn, which, which I'll show you. Yep, so there's, there's the two balls. Um, I got two, two small balls of the black yarn and one ball of the white yarn. And this is supposed to be um, alpaca and BFL, blue-faced Leicester. Um, and 
I'm supposed to hold the it says, it says, note yarn is used double throughout the pattern, and then handwritten it says, for the DK yarn, Aaron is used single. So I'm assuming, because there's more white, that the Aaron is supposed to be used single and the black yarn has um, is not. So here's where I am. I have gotten the color work portion of it complete. Here is my reverse, which actually looks fantastic. <laughs> I'm really thrilled. <laughs> I'm quite impressed with myself. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say, but there's the back. There's the front. Um, you saw how much black yarn. I used the black yarn double, like it. I think it said. Um, and I don't have enough to, to do this, this Fair Isle panel on, on the back. So... I just have enough white, I think, to just do a, a, a white back. Or I could hold one of them, sing I could hold it single, I don't know. I'm not ripping it out, not at this point. <clears throat> and um, when, you, when you do Fair Isle, um, always be sure to look up yarn dominance. And uh, that the way you strand the yarn helps to determine if your if your fair aisle is going to pop or not um, and the way that you the best way I can I can describe yarn dominance is that the one yarn you want to be dominant which I decided I wanted the black to be dominant always um, knit that one un from underneath the white yarn and because I knit because of the funny way that I knit I don't hold the two yarns like I don't I don't have a yarn on each finger um, I don't even I don't wrap any any yarn around my fingers, so um, I would drop the yarns as I as I would knit. So um, I would always kind of um, knit with the white yarn on top, and then I would pull the black one from underneath it. And the thought is is that um, Isolde has a really has a really great. Um, I'm just gonna link 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 Isolde's uh, yarn dominance. Uh, page. Let me look at that. Yarn dominance. <clears throat> All right. So her website is ysolda isolda.com forward slash blog forward slash 2014 forward slash five forward slash 29 forward slash technique dash Thursday dash color with the OU. Um, slash dominance. Um, and so the thought is the lower yarn um, takes up more yarn and more yarn equals a bigger stitch so that makes it dominant. So um, she's got an excellent post there. I'll, I'll link that in the bottom of this um, of the video so you can see that as well. So um, this is supposed to be based on the killing. Uh, the killing, the killing tea cozy, and I guess it was it was commissioned because um, one of her customers wanted a, a sweater based on that, or wanted a tea cozy based on uh, the sweater from, I think the uh, the original killing, not the um, not the U U S version. So there it is. I'm happy with how how the um, color work has turned out. I'm, I haven't done a whole lot of color work. Um, so, my, my edges are a little messy, but whatever. It's going to be a tea cozy. Um, and I'm making this for my mom's birthday. So, um, I have knit most of the uh, tea cozy. I'm doing some ribbing, and then I'll be decreasing um, the ribbing. So, that's that. Oh, and I have... Um, I did cast off... Because I cast off a pair of socks, I decided that I was going to cast on a pair of socks. So I dug into my vintage stash and pulled out this. This is Sweet Georgia Yarns in the blue fig colorway. And it's got uh, purple and magenta and this electric blue uh, coming through. And so I 
cast on for a sock and haven't gotten all that far. Just got the ribbing done and then um, maybe about an inch of the cuff, maybe a little less. So you see it's pooling in a fun way. And then I like how the magenta and the purple are kind of striping in that section. So there's the ball. It's the, it's the two skeins. They're each about 50 grams and 185 yards. Um, so I'm really, I really like this yarn. It's really pretty. Um, Lovely. I love Sweet Georgia and um, I bought this, I, I probably bought this in the beginning or towards the beginning of her, um, of her dying business. So really happy to be using that. Uh, I think that's it of works in progress. A um, couple of sewing things. I, uh, I haven't had much sewing mojo this week, I uh, or since last Thursday really. I just I just haven't felt like going up there. Um, I'm currently working on a project that's um, requiring uh, cathedral windows, and so I'm I'm on the folding and pressing of of that portion right now. Um, so that's. You know, I'm not. I'm not exactly looking forward to going and, and pressing with a steam iron. <laughs> um, so I think that's part of it. I just haven't had any mojo, and so I, I've decided to take naps this week today. I guess my body just just wants naps instead of to be sewing. So um, I will get back up there today as soon as I get that apple pie made, and. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, finally, oh no, not finally. While we were at the library, I forgot to include this in my intro, um, I decided to uh, take out a couple of books. And the first one that I took out is Knitted Animal Hats by Fiona Goble. Gobble, Goble. I'm going to say Goble. Um, there's a couple of different sections. There's tiny hats for teeny babies, cozy hats for cute kids, cool hats for the young at heart. Um, I have kind of skipped the tiny hats for teeny babies because my boys aren't really teeny babies. Yeah, it only goes up to 12 months. And especially Nathaniel has a big noggin. Um, I am thinking of making them this one to go to where when they go see Santa. A little reindeer hat. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I am, um, I'm starting to think about what, uh, this one's cute too, a fox. Um, I'm starting to think about what, what I'd like them to wear when they go see Santa this year. And um, they have, uh, I have a vest that, um, it's a, it's a, or not a vest, uh, a Pendleton shirt that um, some paramedics had to cut off of my brother when he needed some, some medical assistance. And my family gave me the shirt to maybe do something with the boys. And it's this, it's this blue and black buffalo check, I think is the term, um, for, for the plaid. And um, I think I'm going to make the boys a vest uh, each out of the, out of the shirt. Uh, I think that would be really like if they were wearing white button down shirts and um, that blue and black buffalo check vest. I think that would be really that would be really cute for for Christmas. Um, maybe embroider a snowflake on it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. That's kind of what I'm thinking now. So um, I thought maybe that 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 hat would be cute. Um, and then there's there's a lion hat. Super cute. Ah, uh, there's an octopus hat, there's a bear hat, there's a mouse hat, a zebra hat, there's a frog. I mean, there's so many cute, so many cute hats. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Fiona Goble is a craft author and knitting blogger for who many years has run a small textile business making woolen bags, pillows, and throws. She regularly contributes to craft magazines and teaches knitting, crochet, and sewing classes locally. And she's written a couple of other books, uh, including Knit Your Own Royal Wedding and Nativity. She lives just outside London and with her partner and teenage son. So, um, this seems to be a pretty thorough book. Um, there's all the patterns in the front, and then in the back is the usual. Um, here's how you knit, here's how you purl, here's how you sew a seam, all those different kinds of techniques. And, um, yeah, there's just cute little, cute little hats. And I saw Malcolm actually pick up this book and look through it the other day, um, but he didn't actually point out anything that he thought he would like. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I like the, I think I like the reindeer. I think I just like the antlers. They're super cute. I wish there was a picture of, uh, of somebody wearing this one. It's all, oh, it's just, it's just knitted. It's just flat. Uh, but this one's super cute too. That's, um, Scorch the Dragon, a dragon style balaclava. So, that's one book that I got. And then the other book that I got was What to Knit the Toddler Years. And this is, uh, this is written by Nikki Vanderkar. And uh, she also wrote uh, What to Knit When You're Expecting. So, there are a bunch of cute sweaters in here, and um, some scarves and a hat and like a, a bag and a puppet, um, but I really like the sweaters. There's an octopus and a ladybug. Um, I think I'm going to try and knit the Kaylin cardigan. Um, Kaylin is... Uh, uh, Irish for warrior. And let me get to the pictures. I don't want to give any of the secret sauce away. Here's the pictures. There's the Kaylin cardigan. And most of these seem to be like pretty, pretty simple. There's the Joseph cardigan. Pretty simple uh, sweaters and cardigans. I like that one. That would be nice in, in like a Tweety yarn. Uh, which other one did I like? I like Little Red. And I, but I think I actually mostly like the color in that one. <laughs> oh, there's some hand warmers. There's a hat. Was another, it was another sweater that I liked for the boys. We have a Keaton cardigan. Super cute. So I'm gonna, I think I might try and get the boys to um, check this out and see if there's anything that they like. Um, haven't started anything, obviously, um, but we'll see. Um, there's a fair amount of knitting books at the library. Um, there's a little bit of quil quilting books, but not a whole lot. So, sorry about that. Uh, moving on, the last thing I would like to talk about is my spinning. Um, and so let's see, I guess I'll show you. This is my completed bobbin of those singles of that fleece that I told you I was spinning. I am attempting to spin the whole fleece. Um, it was just, uh, I think, three beehives full, so um, I think they're all going to fit on my uh, on the three bobbins that I have. This is the heaviest one. This is get on my trusty kitchen scale. 577 grams, and then um, I'm currently working on one. This is the the last one that I need to um, I need to finish up uh, spinning. 
And then here is my Hansen mini spinner. Oh boy, it needs some dusting. Um, but there's the, the bobbin that I'm currently working on. Um, and the reason I'm trying to finish up spinning the fleece is just because there's so little fleece left. There's my bag. That's as much fleece as I have. So, let's see if we can measure how many how many grams is left. I'm going to guess, it doesn't feel like a lot. I guess maybe 40 grams, no, 56, but yeah, 57 grams. So, not all that much. And I, I think I told you that I thought this was my CDM. It's not. <laughs> I finally found the tag. I knew it was, it was somewhere around here. It was in this ottoman, this uh, storage ottoman that you're, that you are sitting on. This is Polworth wool, and um, I had the, she the, the fleece processed by Moro Fle Fleece Works prior to uh, moving to Ireland. So hopefully I'll have uh, I'll have that done. Um, I've spent a few evenings um, spinning this week, so we'll keep that up. And I think that is about it of everything. Um. Coming up this next week, I don't think it's all that much. Um, two weeks from yesterday, my mom is going to be arriving in Dublin, and um, I'm taking the train up to Dublin and and meeting her and my aunt and spending a couple of days up in Dublin with them before heading down. And then um, and then they're going to spend uh, like a week and a half with us, and then. Um, we are going to Disneyland, which is super exciting. We've been doing, my husband and I have been doing a bunch of research um, online about, about what to do with them. And um, like we've been watching, we watched the fireworks show to determine if there were like big explosions that might scare them. Um, and, and just like watching the point of view ride uh, videos on, on YouTube to, term, to determine if things might be a little too scary. Um, I'd like to do the Ratatouille ride with them, but that looks like it might be a little too intense. So we'll see. We'll see if we can build up to it, maybe. Um, but we're we're starting to get excited and um, making plans of of how we're going to um, do things in in France. Um, one of the things I have found because my my husband's been doing um, these French lessons um, on the. Uh, he's been doing French les lessons on on his com like his uh, iPad, so um, I I was putzing around on the internet one day. He's really nervous about the language barrier over there. I'm not as nervous. We'll make it work. It's it's 2015. You know, I think we can figure some things out. And if not, we'll have our, I'll have my phone. He'll have his phone. We can do. We can do almost anything with these phones. And the exciting thing about these phones um, is that nowadays <laughs> we um, there's, there's uh, this app called Google Translate, which um, looks like this. And um, I was watch I was putzing around on the internet one day and I found uh, this video of, of Google Translate doing La Bamba. And, and what it was is people, uh, people I guess, that work at Google, for the Google Translate app or whatever, um, had held up cards. Um, and the video is, is, you know, of the screen of uh, an iPhone translating these, these, these words. And I'm going to see if I can get it to work um, with the back of this because there's lots of, there's lots of foreign languages here. Uh, let's see. Maybe if one of these is German. I think one of these is Spanish. So. Oh no, it's, uh, let's see, Italian. That's what it is. So, um, you can choose from a bunch of, of um, languages. Um, we, there, we had a Pringles can that we thought had Hebrew on it. That's why I have Hebrew in my one of my used ones. So there's all sorts of languages. Some of them don't actually do the screen 
um, portion of the of the translating. Um, so I've chosen Italian. So you can see up there, Italian. Um, and then I there's this little icon that's the phone or it's a camera. So I'm going to click that. Um, you can also um, hit the microphone and and have somebody say what they're saying in the foreign language, and then Google Translate will translate it to, for you. Or you can write what you see. There's a there's like a squiggly line right there um, that will that will translate. Um, so let me see if I can let me see if I can get this. This might be a little complicated because I'm going to be holding it up so you can see. Let's see. <clears throat> so it magically holding everything still is going to be the challenge for you. Oh. <laughs> so there's the Italian. No, that's not the Italian. That's the English. There's the Italian. So it magically can detect detect what is there. Ugh. And translate it. So you can see you can see some words popping up. I am just not able to hold it still enough for you to see. <laughs> but that's what it does. You hold it up and it will it will translate it. Um, let me see if I can do yeah, it'll do English to Italian. So let me see if I can do something like that. The business card. Yeah, so Velo Opre. So I just think that's super. Like, we live in a day where I can hold up my phone. Don't allow. Cancel. Sorry about that. I live in a day where where I can <laughs> you get the picture <laughs> I'm just it's hard holding it up so so this camera can see it this camera can see it and yeah but we live in a day where I can have a translator in my pocket like just like that just like that Anywho, I guess that's about it for today. <laughs> um, any tips, uh, Disneyland Paris? I'll take them. Any tips, Disneyland with a toddler? I'll take them. And um, I'll be back next week. Next week will also be the last podcast of the month because the week after I will be in Dublin. And yeah, so... I hope you all have uh, a good week, and uh, I'll see you then. I'll see you next week. Bye.
You just told me that the word yuck is yuck. Right? Uh, yeah. Mom, the worm is yuck, so you, you can't touch it. You gave me a word. Are you talking about Mr. Slug? Do you remember Mr. Slug yesterday? He is dirty, huh? He is dirty, pa. He is dirty, pa. He is dirty. He got your camera. What do you think my mom? Bye.